Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at DAO, ticker symbol D-O-W. This video is part of our DAO 30 analysis where we're analyzing all 30 stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average to see which stocks could be a good buy today. I'll leave a link in the description below to all the companies we've completed so far. Okay, so we're going to look quickly at Dow's business, and then we're going to see if we can come up with a fair value for Dow's stock using discounted free cash flow and a few other methods as well. Okay, so let's jump right in. So Dow Inc., this company, well, they actually came into existence after the Dow DuPont company separated back in 2019. And at that time, they broke the Dow DuPont company into three different companies. Dow focused on commodity chemical production. This is the company we're looking at today. Then DuPont focuses on specialty chemical productions. And then Corteva, well, they actually focus on agricultural chemicals. Okay, now for the present day Dow company, well, they break their business into three primary segments. And this is according to their fiscal year 2020 revenue. Okay, so their largest segment is their packaging and specialty plastic segment. It accounted for nearly half of revenue in 2020. Then they have industrial intermediaries and infrastructure segment that pulled in about 31% of revenue. And then the materials and coding segment brought in the final 21%. So basically what Dow does is they make chemicals that are used to produce other products. That's how these this revenue breakdown ultimately happens. What is their final, what is the final product used for? So that's really how they're breaking out this revenue. Now Dow is actually one of the world's largest producers of ethylene. Ethylene is one of the key ingredients used to make plastics. Those plastics are then used to make things like packaging for food and consumer products, uh, footwear, artificial turf, they have pressure pipes, uh, power and telecom infrastructure, the list goes on and on. So they're involved in a ton of different industries and they're very much tied to the overall health of the global economy. And they make a lot more than ethylene, I'm just using that as one example. But one of the important points for us to recognize is that one of their key feedstock items is oil. Generally, oil is used to produce ethylene, ethylene goes to polyethylene, and it goes right down the line until they eventually make plastics. But I bring this out because Dow's profitability is likely very much tied to the overall price of oil because they are buying oil, turning that into other products. So the higher that price go, the higher their costs go, the lower their profit margins go. And if we knew nothing else but that, well, that would tell us that this is a very cyclical business that's largely driven, again, by the overall health of the economy. A good example of this is when we look at their revenue chart, well, as the economy began to struggle in 2020, we could see their revenue began to drop and revenue has gradually come back as the economy has gradually come back. Okay, now what about coming up with a fair value for Dow stock? Well, with a well-established company like Dow, despite the fact that they were recently spun off, they, they got spun off with a ton of revenue, a ton of profit, and a ton of free cash flow. So it would seem that discount of free cash flow should work fairly well. But when we look at our discount of free cash flow calculation for Dow stock, well, we take analyst estimates for free cash flow going up the next few years, discount them back by our required rate of return, and we get a fair value of the entire company of about 127 bucks per share. Now, generally, we should adjust this calculation for net debt. So we take debt, subtract cash, and then we adjust the fair value of the entire company for what is just the value of the stock. In this case, we get a fair value of the stock of about 108 bucks per share. Right now, Dow is trading closer to $60 per share. So it looks like this stock could be crazy undervalued. Now, when I see such a huge difference between our current price and the discounted free cash flow calculation, well, I like to double check to see other methods to see if they verify that this stock is in fact this undervalued. Now, if you're curious how to do this whole calculation, well, I actually did a, a tutorial video on how to do discounted cash flow. So if you're curious, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I got an Excel template you can have. I'll leave a link to that in the below if you're curious how to do it. Okay, now let's test out enterprise value to revenue. So this is a chart of Dow's enterprise value to revenue going back to 2019. Now this is close to when the Dow DuPont spin actually happened. So I think it makes sense to start at this point and not go back further when all the companies were combined. So the average multiple over this time period is about 1.3x. Right now, Dow is currently trading right around that same level. So this valuation method would imply that Dow stock is fairly valued. Okay, how about price to earnings? 
So this is a chart of Dow's price to earnings multiple going again back to 2019. Now, one of the flaws of the price to earnings multiple is that we get these massive jumps and drops as earnings numbers are reported and the stock reacts to those numbers. But still, it's not completely useless. It can still give us some interesting feedback. And once again, over this time period, well, the average is about 19x. Right now, Dow is trading right around 11x, which again, seems like a decent deal. First, compared to its own history, it looks like a pretty good deal, but it also seems like a good deal compared to the other companies that came out of the Dow DuPont spinoff. So going back to these three companies for a second, right now we saw that Dow is trading at about 11x. This is price to earnings we're looking at. DuPont is currently trading at about 28x, and then Corteva AgriScience is trading at about 39x. Now, I haven't spent too much time analyzing these two other companies but I was curious how their numbers compared today compared to how Dow looks. And I was a bit surprised to see that Dow was trading so much lower than these other two companies. Perhaps these other two companies are less cyclical than Dow is, which could explain part of it. But again, we'd have to do that research to completely understand. Now, overall, I like Dow's business and I actually want to research these other two companies to see if there's a reasonable explanation for why these numbers are so far different from each other. Now, like I mentioned a second ago, price to earnings can be quite volatile, and maybe that's just it. Maybe this is an anomaly uh, at this point in time. This is the way it is. But either way, what's our best move for Dow's stock? Well, if we already owned Dow, hopefully we got it at a good price, I think holding this stock makes a ton of sense. I like the business over the long run. Plus, they pay a dividend, which is a nice thing that adds to the overall performance of our stock. But my real concern about personally buying Dow at this point is how volatile the margins really are. So I mentioned before how their margins move somewhat similar to the price of oil and other commodities. And to me, with the unpredictability of commodities, I think buying Dow at this point is somewhat tricky to justify. Plus, we have the added benefit of knowing that Dow is a global, that is, Dow is very much tied to the global economy. But the global economy isn't really, it, it is doing better now than it was last year, but there are problems on the horizon. This could be a big issue. Another real issue is inflation. Inflation historically has increased commodity prices, which we know will hurt Dow. Higher inflation will, is also very likely to cause an increase in interest rates, a reduction in the money supply, whatever we want to call it, the Federal Reserve is likely to have to do something about inflation, which will hurt the global economy. And these are two strikes against buying Dow at this point. Now, I actually did a video not too long ago where I talk about inflation and some of the moves that the Federal Reserve may have to make. So if you're curious, perhaps that's a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.